So how, how did the story go as Manu Haran told it to you, girl? American troops. Yeah, what he told me was uh, during World War II, uh, they found out, the, the Japanese found out that it was a martial art, and they were surprised that it, they, they were so proficient in, the, in close quarter combat. And so they, what they did was they found out who the leaders or the, or the teachers were in each village, and then they were supposed to, they brought them on a boat, and they were never heard of again. So nobody, people are just surmising what happened. Nobody really knows because mm -hmm. no information came back. So the, the, maybe, they, maybe they went to Japan and disposed there, or maybe they did it out in sea. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows. That's the story that what Mano Leo told me. Mm -hmm. I can only go what he told me. I don't think he's lied uh, because of, you know, he's a... Uh, He's just not the individual, the type of love. But that story is that uh, that he that he told was told to me uh, when I after two years of when I studied this, mm -hmm. you know, that he found out that there was art that was efficient. He said, "What is this art that can sometimes uh, deal with the, the samurai blade? The samurai blade is 42 inches long, mm -hmm. and they found out it was an art that they taught in a lot of villages, and and so." Uh, when they found out, they, they rounded up to a lot of the instructors, and they were supposed to be shipped to Japan to, I don't know, I don't think so it was what a, year would this be? This would be uh, probably, I'm just guessing, it has to be in between 1942 to 1945, okay. but I think it's more like 42, 43. Okay. But you know, it's, it's so long when Mano Leo told me that story. That's, that's a story that Mano Leo, so, what my daughter heard was uh, what Mano Liu probably was telling me, because mm -hmm. he, he was at my house a lot, you know. And uh, it just, you know, who knows who the story, because when you hear it one way, it could be over-exaggerated in another mm -hmm. way, you know. But that's a story he, he told me. You know? So it's either bayonet oh, and rifle. You. So they found out that uh, it, at that range where the bullet was affected against uh, rifle and bayonet and, uh, and the samurai sword, so they, they said, why is it so, so good? In the jungle so, because it's jungle, one, it's jungle terrain. Yeah. I think the Swiss is Christian, they said it the best, so that the machine gun gets killed yeah. at a mile, but no one can see a mile in the jungles of Mindanao. Right? So then you, you, it mainly goes back to the rifle and bayonet and uh, sword play. And they found out that they were very efficient, so they start, then people are saying, well, the reason why this is good, there's an art in each village, and usually people have a, a teacher, and so they rounded up the teachers, and they put them on a boat to Japan. And there, uh, they don't know if they reached Japan or if it was out in the sea, but they were never heard of again. That's the story that Mano Leo told me. You know, so I don't think he would lie to me, you know, because he's not, he's not that type of individual. He's not into uh, telling, you know, stories to be told. He, he, you know, uh, he's the first one that he says, all these young kids are talking about how good the, the sword play is. He says that the Japanese soldier was a very efficient soldier with the samurai, samurai blade. Everybody has some training in either in kendo or kenjutsu. They're very efficient, and it was very difficult in the brush to deal with them. But they had a lot of success. And then he told me that story. He says that's the story. He says that the, they found out, and so they started to round up all the teachers. And they says, who? is a teacher in this village of this art, and then they just round them all up. And I don't know if that's more in the north or the south. I don't think it's in the southern, because the southern Philippines, you know, they, you know, they don't, uh, I think it's more in the north and the central that that, that, that happened. But that's the story that was handed down by Mano Leo. Mano Leo was there before the... Uh, so, the, girl, these Filipinos, when J Japan came in, if I remember my history correctly, yeah. they were talking about the Greater Asian. Yeah. And so there was, right. they were appealing to they, the Filipinos as we, we, we Asians you, yeah. and those American colonialists. There was, a, there was and, the Filipinos that wanted to join the Japanese side. Mm -hmm. There's the Filipinos that wanted to stay with the American side. And there's a the Filipino that wanted Philippines for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So you had like three, I call them three separate groups. One that wanted the, the American occupation in there because they thought it did, did really good. The other wanted the Japanese culture in there. And the third group, you know, they're pro-Filipino. 
That's why when they were having guerrilla fighting, it, it wasn't good because Filipino groups were fighting Filipino groups, and they're fighting the Japanese, and they're fighting the American Filipino force. Mm -hmm. So they're fighting three ways. So you, that became the, known as the Hukbo Huk, mm -hmm. or the Huks. They were a communist group. I heard about that. So they didn't want the the Japanese in there, and they didn't want the Americans in there, and they didn't want the Filipino-American force. So they wanted Philippines for the Philippines, not for the Filipino uh, and American force. And then Philip America gave their independence, I think it's 1946. Mm -hmm. This is the story, because I, I grew up in World War II. Right. See, the, uh, the 442nd is all Japanese, but there were Filipinos in the 442nd. Mm. A lot of people don't know that. They fought uh, with the Japanese against the Germans. Oh. See, the World War II is not oh, the that, 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 right. that famous unit, yeah. Yeah, that's the 442nd.